Hello there. Only one Kenobi here. Only one. Before we get going. Oh man, love that piece of music. Love to know it is by John Williams as well. It's been very difficult to get that out of my head after every time I've watched Kenobi. So it's a bit late for me to be doing this video, but I thought I would just give you kind of like a summary of, well, the last episode. And excuse me while I try and find a place to park this ukulele. I like that, well, the series as a whole maybe, but first and foremost, the last episode, I really enjoyed it. Uh, you know, the whole series has not been perfect, you know, but there's been a lot of criticism of it as a whole but I tell you something man my stance on the whole thing has been there's been plenty of stuff that is highly more critical than this series has been overall I was very nervous about what they were going to do with it I personally didn't ever want Obi-Wan Kenobi and Darth Vader to ever meet or fight before they did on the in A New Hope on the Death Star however my mind has changed on that when I've sort of like reassessed what's been said in the original trilogy and um you know, I've just sort of evolved and changed. And do you know something else? I will start this review by saying my favourite part of that last episode was that lightsaber fight. Um, I always thought the one on Mustafar was way too elaborate and it was long and it was, you know, lightsaber fights don't have to be massively choreographed and acrobatic to be good. Um, for example, Ray and Kylo on the... <laughs> on the Starkiller base. And I can't believe I'm actually referencing the sequel film, although Force Awakens was not necessarily one I had a big issue with. We'll talk about the sequels later. But um, yeah, brilliant. Brilliant lightsaber fight. And what I really liked about it was seeing Anakin Skywalker and the, the helmet was cracked open and he looked messed up. And it, it, was, it was brilliant. What he said, how he sounded. I'm not your failure, Obi. What, whatever he said. What's it? I'm not your failure. And he said, I, you, you, know, um, you, you know, you didn't. What did he say now? God almighty, I should have written things down before I did this video. Um, he basically said, I killed. Um, you know, Anakin's gone. He said, I think he's gone. You know, I killed him or whatever. And he looked happy about it. He was like smiling. Evil. Brilliant. He looked, as Obi-Wan said in Return of the Jedi, twisted and evil. And that is 10 years of waiting to meet Obi-Wan that's done that. It's driven him mad, hasn't it? And he was bested by Obi-Wan Kenobi. I loved that when Obi-Wan just stood and lifted all those rocks. He was all over him. He could have finished Vader there and then. Obviously, he wasn't going to do that because then we would have no episodes four, five, and six. But um, one of the criticisms of the series has been that Obi-Wan was not what he used to be or what people expected. But fan films and speculation way before the series was even announced have discussed the idea that Obi-Wan suffers or suffered post-traumatic stress disorder after the ordeal on Mustafar in itself. And so for anyone who was you know, having a problem with how Obi-Wan was, um, that's my answer, that he was hiding out, keeping his head low. That Jedi he bumped into, I didn't have a big problem with that, but he was just basically probably paranoid as hell that his cover would be blown. That was the single most important thing to obviously to Obi-Wan at that point. To, to stay on Tatooine, keep your head down, and wait until the time is right. Um, but yeah, I, I do also see the stance of how he was. He wasn't quite how I would have expected him to be, but he did end the series on episode six perfectly for me. Well, not perfectly, maybe that's a slight, but it was brilliant. I loved it, uh, the last episode. And um, going back to the sequels, as I say, I found what I saw in them way harder to accept and digest and I was insulted and <laughs> wounded by a lot of the things I saw there but that's for another video I will kind of go over the sequels maybe another time some are better than others the sections I do enjoy of all of them but <laughs> oh I'll never come to terms with them but anyway I, in terms of a series of, uh, uh, of Disney Plus I would say wholeheartedly that this was 
Well, I don't know, man. I think it ranks higher than Book of Boba Fett. Nothing quite touches the Mandalorian yet. That's kind of raw. I had a discussion with a friend of mine. You may know him, Tim from Bosk's Bounty. And I said to him, I said, this thing that we saw now, um, if you put all the series and all the movies together, I'd say that uh, the Mandalorian is like the Rogue One of the TV series. Rogue One was kind of gritty and you know, more adult, should we say. Although that film has its critics, you know, all you have to do is look at, talk to Hello Greedo, he doesn't like it. And also Red Letter Media, they didn't like it. But there's loads of people who do like Rogue One. It's not a film I rush back to watch, but um, I just thought Mandalorian had that grit and it's just kind of like on a pedestal in a lot of fans' eyes. Oh, I'm going all around the houses. Going back to this final episode, that was just phenomenal. I loved that uh, matchup, and I loved, you know, how Vader looked. And, um, you know, I've kind of changed my mind on a few things. You know, when Vader says, um, when I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. Now, in my head for many years, when he said, when I left you, I thought he was talking about the last time he saw him because he really wasn't any kind of master. He was still an apprentice. He was a young kid, Anakin, when he got bested on Mustafar. So it annoyed me the fact that Kathleen Kennedy came out and said, oh, they're going to have the rematch that we all want. And it's like, well, do we all want a rematch? I'd sooner just leave it so that the last time they fought was the lava, you know. But actually, when he said I left you, he means left him as a learner, as in apprentice or whatever. He signed off from the Jedi and became a Sith, you know what I mean? So that's fair enough. And in terms of just a one-off fight, although that one in the cave or wherever they were outside on that planet was not the best with the, the st I didn't like that one, the one with the fire, you know, when you put him face down in the fact that made no sense, that one, but this one on that dark planet, wherever it was, was, was awesome, really good. Um, and then what else in the episode I liked? I liked the, well, the emperor appeared, but I did not, I, w I wished he was a bit more shrouded. They, they, they had a close up of his face. His eyes look really squinty and weird. Not how I remember him looking in Return of the Jedi. I know this is like a decade, a decade before that, but he kind of looked a little bit older or washed out. So I think they could have got away with it with a longer shot. Um, also, Qui Gon Jinn appears at the end of this, and uh, I watched it for a second time this morning. This is Saturday when I'm making this video, and it was slightly better. But my first opinion on Qui Gon was terrible wig. He looks like an older Qui-Gon Jinn. That shouldn't have been the case. They should have um, used their, well, not necessarily deep fake, but they should have used some kind of CGI magic to have mocked up a Qui-Gon that looked exactly how he looked in 1999. This guy didn't. This was as bad as how Luke looked as a Force ghost in Tross, which was awful because he looked also like a Force ghost that grew hair. You know what I mean? His hair was longer. He looked ragged. He looked nothing like he did in The Last Jedi. Appalling continuity. So that was the one issue with Qui-Gon Jinn. I would have liked, I would have preferred Qui-Gon to have just been a voice like he was in quite a lot of the Clone Wars. Obi-Wan, when he talked to people like that, you know, just a voiceover. A second series? I don't know about that. And also, oh yeah, Reva, right? You know, I, I mean, Reva on that subplot of going to Tatooine, I thought all that was crap. So it wasn't great, really, all that business. It was nonsense. Plus, I wasn't nervous at all for Owen's uh, health and well-being because... She was hardly going to kill him, was she now? So that was a bit rubbish. That was the problem with doing a kind of a prequel when you know who's going to survive in that sense. That's what all things 80s were saying, Dean. But um, thoroughly entertaining. Reva, I would have had a lot more respect for that character because I had no problem with Ingram and her acting. I thought she did her job pretty well, to be honest with you. But had she been slaughtered by Vader and by the, what's he called? The uh, Grand Inquisitor... She served her purpose. Her arc would have been full circle there. You found out who she was, a youngling, and then bang. Ah, yes, there is one more thing I wanted to say about this episode. And I really loved the speech at the end with Obi-Wan and Leia. And I'm not afraid to say I found it very difficult keeping a dry eye, man. I don't know what it was that set me off. But that speech when he said, you know, Princess Leia Organa, your mother, or he says, you talked about the mother and the father. Um, these are qualities found in your mother and you are also brave, courageous, steadfast. These are qualities found in your father. Both were exceptional people and I wished I could tell you more. And it was just something about it. I don't know if it's just because Ewan McGregor is a fantastic actor. It was lovely, very poignant. Um, 
And that was just awesome. So that wrapped it up nicely for me is all I really wanted to say there. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on it all. I've seen a lot worse, you know. There's a lot of people. I know people are ripping it apart, but, you know, God almighty, you could rip anything apart, couldn't you, really? But I don't think anything, in far, as far as I am concerned, from my point of view, was that offensive to law, canon, whatever you want to call it, as what I saw in the sequel. I'm really sorry if you like it, but the sequel travesty, um, never, I will never get over that. And um, I'm very disappointed in whoever was responsible for serving that up and not planning it extensively. That's all I want to say about that. Thank you. This has been Only One Kenobi. Only One. Out.